Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I'll be talking about Godzilla, but not just any Godzilla. This time, I'll be talking about Hanna-Barbera's version of Godzilla. If you've never heard of it, it's okay. It only went for two years, from 1978 to 1979. It was just one of those little shows that Hanna-Barbera did for a little while, because as we all know, Hanna-Barbera, they would do all kinds of things back in the day. In fact, it's so simple to explain, this probably won't take me very long. The story is about a group of scientists. They travel around the world investigating strange phenomena like seismic activity that's happening somewhere it shouldn't. While they're looking into these things, they always run into monsters, or even a few supervillains trying to take over the world. When their backs are to the wall, they call on Godzilla by using some special signal. How is it that Godzilla comes to their aid and why he obeys them? They never do explain. And what's even more interesting, if they can't signal Godzilla, they have his nephew, Godzuki. Because whenever Godzuki calls for Godzilla, he shows up. The surprising thing is Godzuki can fly. He actually has wings under his arms. And it's weird because Godzilla, obviously, he can't fly. He doesn't even have wings. But Godzuki does. Even more surprising, Godzuki can actually understand what the people are telling him. Oh, and one more thing. Godzuki can't even breathe fire. Whatever he tries, all he ends up doing is blowing smoke rings. Godzilla, on the other hand, he breathes fire. Not his trademark atomic breath, because Hanna-Barbera could not get the rights to use that. And you're not going to believe this. This version of Godzilla can shoot laser beams out of his eyes. I'm not kidding. Obviously, Hanna-Barbera decided to take a little artistic license by adding in that feature. And it wasn't such a bad idea. I thought it was kind of cool, actually. Now, I know what you're going to ask me. Did they have Godzilla's famous roar? Well, no. Just like Godzilla's atomic breath, Hanna-Barbera could not get the rights to that. So instead, they had a professional voice actor do the roar for him. And believe it or not, the roars that Godzilla makes was actually voiced by Ted Cassidy. You would know him better as Lurch from The Addams Family. One of the most interesting things about this show is how good the animation really is. It's, you know, your basic cheap animation, but the colors are great, it's very smooth going, and it just looks pretty darn good. I say that because, let's not forget, Hanna-Barbera did do a lot of cheap animation back in the day, especially during this time frame. Because the show only lasted for a couple of years, and it was so simple in design, there's really nothing else I could say, except this. If you ever have the time, you might want to check this out. You can actually find it on YouTube and quite a few other places. Now, I wouldn't go in with any serious high hopes, especially if you're a Godzilla fan, but I would give it a chance. It's actually pretty decent for what it is. Because if you think about it, this was the first real time that America actually tried to make their own version of Godzilla. So again, if you ever get the time, look it up. Who knows? You might actually like it. This is Movie Fan, signing off.